Okay, let's say you're ready to run the machine and uh, you really don't have any charge in the caps or maybe there's just a little bit of charge and you want to bump it up so you want to see the machine run it and charge itself. Alright, that's the, that's the objective of this. So put together a little bank of 9 volt batteries because uh, uh, the uh, motor really doesn't draw much amperage at all but it, it likes the voltage. So get yourself some good high voltage like that and let's make the connection of that into it. Well first of all let me show you here. Uh, let's spin this. Okay no power going to it so it doesn't run. Get it back where it won't just kick. Okay so we're all we're connected right here on the input side and we'll give it a little turn and there it goes. Okay, now what we're doing is it's running up from the batteries, from the little 9 volts, and it's uh, running the generator, and the generator is now charging the caps. And so you want to run that for a while. It, uh, it, it, I've used these over and over and over and over and they still work every time because like I said the, the thing just really likes voltage so anyway um, get those caps charged up to a point where it will uh, self operate and uh, now I do have some charge in the caps so let's just say that we've done that for a while then disconnect these and connect into itself Okay, oops, did you see that alright? Probably not. Okay, it went in here. I disconnected these and connected these lines coming out of the cat bank 3 into the system that pulses the motor. Now it's running and charging itself. charge side, pulsing, so you want to speed it up, you want a faster charge, run it up to 6, 7, 800 RPM on its own power. Okay, now it's running and charging itself, but what we're going to do here in this little test is I'm going to show you how it will operate a resistive load. Now, you don't really want to do this, but I'm going to just show you this to show you that there is plenty of power that's coursing through the system on this. So uh, let me just hook up these two little leads right in here, and what we're going to tap is we're going to we're just going to tap the the negative peak of the sine wave just the negative the positive is going to keep on uh, working to uh, continue charging or recharging the caps in cap bank 3 so here we go let me show you what this does now watch how it drags the thing down because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling directly off of the coils so it's not doing the it's not going through the caps at all this is coming directly off the co coils and just on that negative sine peak so you're going to see this pulsate and you're going to see a, a heck of a way that you can charge batteries so let's hook this up number four let's see that's it for the negative and oops way to not stay let's put it back. okay there it is now uh, you can hear the generator come down it's so doggone bright it's a, it's only a 25 watt bulb 
but it gets so bright that I'm afraid the, the filament's just going to melt in that. But there's a resistive load and it still continues to charge, recharge cat bank 3 with the positive of the sign while we're running this resistive load directly off the coils. Uh, not the intention of this machine. This machine is intended to uh, convert energy in a very, very efficient way to charge other devices that will power your load. So it's not designed to uh, power the load directly off these coils, though it will. And if you can see, can, I don't know if the camera is picking that up, if you can see the pulsing, does that, uh, does that show? I don't know. It's pulsing. And that's just half of the phase, of the, of the sine wave phase. So when you combine, uh, you know, both the positive and negative, it would be a lot smoother light. Uh, unfortunately, there's so much power that it would probably, again, melt that filament. Because I'm going to show you how uh, each phase of the sine wave will um, produce uh, over 100 volts. Okay, this next demonstration is kind of neat. This is uh, one of the same motors that I use for the Stargate project. It's 24 volt motor and being this uh, as a 24 volt system that's going to work out great. And what I've done is I've got it connected to these little leads which there they are and they're going in and they're going to connect to the output that is generally used to recharge cat bank 3. And I'm not going to run the machine but I'm going to show you what this does. Let me just uh, spin it by hand. Let me show you here. Okay, hear it? If I stop it, it stops. I'm spinning it. Faster and faster. Okay, now that's what it's doing when this machine is running itself and recharging Cat Bank 3. You hear the power going to that thing. It's like, <laughs> it's like full torque. Oh, it's stuck. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we'll get it off of that. Okay, that's a fun experiment. Okay, now it's running. It's in uh, self-running, self-powering mode. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to connect this while it's doing that. And hopefully you can hear that motor running on full power while this is running and continuing to charge itself. This is all self-run stuff here. I'm going to show you with input power because really the best way to run and use this device would be with maybe one or two solar panels. Let them come in, bring the power in, be buffered through cap bank 3, run this thing and let one and two continue to run the charge and output from those like we're doing here only to charge up a bank of batteries. That's going to be the optimum way to use this piece of technology. Okay, as I previously promised, I'm going to show you the power that's running through these different uh, uh, phase charges. And right now, this meter here is connected uh, directly to cap bank number three and that's standing voltage 21.56 volts and over here this one is also 21.56 volts because and it's that is the standing voltage in cap bank 2 which we are going to tap the power that goes into cap bank 2 again that's that uh, negative uh, sine wave peak power uh, not even touching the positive and I'm going to show you what uh, this power does. So let's get this thing started. And let's, oh, and also I've got a little ammeter down here. And that'll show you how much power this is drawing. And also, again, I almost forgot this. Uh, now I've got input power going down to two 12 volt lead acid batteries for a 24 volt input. And uh, again, you could use batteries, but I would prefer some solar panels to, to operate this system correctly and most efficiently and, uh, and get you the accelerated charge that you're looking for. Uh, so here we go. All right. 
Now, if you notice, it's not 2156 anymore on Cat Bank 2. It's now 39.4, let's just say. And this is already coming up on Cat Bank 3, charging 2160, 2161 from 2156 just a few seconds ago. So it's working and and it's drawing from the uh, two 12 volt batteries in series. It is drawing about 450 milliamps. And I don't know if you can see that very well with this, but uh, anyway, that's what's going on. Okay, now 3955. Okay, now what I'm going to do is something really strange. I am going to unplug these two connections. I'm just going to unplug them. And what, what they represent is the charge going into the caps through the system from the generator side of the coils. Okay, so again, where are we? 3960, which is respectable, you know, charge going into those. But, uh, just unplug this. Okay, so that disengages the generator. Now we've got nothing going into the caps. They are totally unplugged. Okay, the only thing that's connected to the caps is ground. All right, now what are we showing here? Oh, look at that. Isn't that amazing? It jumped up to 86.2 volts. Now I can get it up to 100 or over. Let's just speed this up. I guess I should show you. I'm just speeding it up with the stupid little reed switch. Oops. I gotta be careful. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Okay, yeah, it's coming up. 98.3. Usually comes up and hovers around between 102 and 105. Let's see if I can get it to go any faster. Get a little bit more power. Well, oh, there it goes. I heard it go. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, that's not too bad. It's still almost 100 volts. It'll probably rise up to it. Oh, there it goes. Now it's a little over 100. It'll eventually get up to about 104, 105 volts. So anyway, that is the power that is being generated that when these are plugged in will go to uh, cap bank 1 and 2. That's just on the negative peak of the sine wave. So we've got that equal power on the positive peak of the sine wave as well. So you've got that much power going into cap bank 2, and then you've got that same power from the other peak going into cap bank 1. So it's kind of the voltage doubler situation, but it uh, gives you some serious power. Oh, yeah, I just heard it speed up. There we go. 104 volts. That's respectable. Now, the interesting thing about this is uh, when the caps are disconnected, let me, let me just slow this down for a second because I don't want to get hurt here. I've been hurt too many times. <laughs> All right, we'll just get it going really slow and draw hardly anything. Get it down to about 300 milliamps. That's good. Okay. 300 milliamps gives us, uh, oh, let's see. If we can get that in the show. 617 RPM. Did you, oh, shoot. I don't know if I, if you could see that. Sorry. There we go. 618 RPM at 300 milliamps, roughly. There we go. Yeah, so that's pretty good. And we're still cooking away at what? Oh, 91 volts. Not too bad. So that's good. But the 
thing I was most anxious to tell you that I haven't said yet is when you disconnect the power going into the caps, if you touch the top of the caps, which is actually the positive of the cap where you see the aluminum showing uh, beyond the little blue wrapper, insulated wrapper, if you touch the top of those, uh, well, I'd probably end up on the floor right now because it gives you a whopping shock, and yet they're disconnected from power input. Because remember, this is just coming off of the, the negative sign peak. So, uh, how do you get a shock from those caps when there's no power going into them? I mean, you can play with a, a cap that's just in your hand and you're not going to get a shock from it. It's DC. But, uh, but these will shock you. And when you plug them back in, now it's totally safe. I can lay my hand there. I can lay my face there. Doesn't matter. No shock. But, uh, very interesting that, see now the power has come down here to 69 volts. And if we unplug these again, it jumps back up to 89, 90, over 90. So that's because we're not putting the power into the caps. And yet, we are putting the power into the caps because if I was able to hold this on here long enough and you were willing enough, you would see the voltage continue to rise on cap bank 3, which is coming directly from the charge of 1 and 2 when these are plugged in. So, you know, I don't know what's going on. But uh, it's interesting. Now you can see that oh, it, it just rose up and it bumped back down. It went up to 2167. Uh, the camera didn't I moved the camera too slow. Didn't catch it. It'll go back up. It'll continue to go up. It goes up slowly. But, uh, but it does that while these are disconnected. So the only thing I can think of is since they're grounded and, uh, and there's no power going into them, since you've got this massive amount of, of permanent magnetic uh, uh, field rotating inside there on the two rotors with the you know 12 uh, half pound N52 neos. That's quite a bit. But then consider the fact that you're pulsing at high frequency on the motor side and you're getting high frequency pulses on the generator side at the same time and all that stuff is just turning and turning and turning and rotating in there and then you've got these little aluminum electrostatic cans sitting on top of all that field activity below it. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Anybody got any ideas on that? Let me know. But uh, that's what it does. <laughs> and you don't dare touch this when those are unplugged even though there's no power going into them. They're ground. They're on ground. They will give you a big old shock. So, how are you getting that shock transferred? Anyway, just a point of interest. I just wanted to share that with you. I was most excited about that as, as anything. You know, wireless power transfer or something going on there. I, I really don't know. But I'm definitely going to research that. So, that's cool.